Good evening. I thank you for joining with us this evening as we prepare to begin our season of Lent on this Ash Wednesday. We come in the knowledge of our God's faithfulness, that God is with us always. And it's in the season of Lent that we, that we journey towards the truth of the cross and the victory of Easter, in which we celebrate Jesus' resurrection from the tomb. So as we gather here, I invite you to join us as we pray. Lord, we thank you that we have opportunity to be here this evening and to begin the journey in the season of Lent together, knowing that because of Easter we will never be the same again. We invite you to come and to be with us, Lord, and bless us with the beauty and the glory of your presence. For we thank you that you're our God who is faithful. And we ask you, Lord, to... Through the power of your Holy Spirit, give us the ability. Give us the strength. Give us the wisdom. And give us the vision to journey with you in this 40-day season of preparation and repentance toward the truth and the celebration of Easter's empty tomb. For we ask this in the wonderful name of your Son, who is Lord and Savior of our life. It's the name of Jesus we pray. And together we say, Amen. If you would, let us join together in our call to worship. It's there in your bulletin. Brothers and sisters in Christ, every year at Easter, during the time of the Christian Passover, we celebrate our redemption through the death and resurrection of our Lord. We begin this season by acknowledging our need for repentance and for the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's join together with hymn number 298. Stand as we're able, please.
I invite you to greet those around you. Maybe there's somebody that you don't know that you can meet. And then if you will, please be seated. Thank you, Clyde. During the season of Lent, we will be focusing on the truth that we are never the same again because of Easter's truth and message. And during the season of Lent, in this seven-week journey, we will be focusing on the last hours of the life of Christ. The Sunday we will begin our look at those last hours with the Last Supper. And then we will look at the events that took place from the Garden of Gethsemane all the way to the resurrection of Jesus at the empty tomb in the following weeks. On Sunday, you'll be invited to take a devotional that is being written for the next week based on the theme of the Last Supper. And then each week following, we will provide you a weekly devotional that you can follow during the week, following that week's focus. You also invite you to join us every Wednesday for a Lenten experience that will be held from 11.45 to 12.15. There are different speakers from our area that will be here to guide us, and they will also be focusing on the theme that we're never the same again. Next week's speaker is 
Reverend Biff Averitt. And he will also focus on the Last Supper theme as well. So by, by the time we reach Easter, truly, we will say we will never be the same again because of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Tonight, I want us to focus on the meaning of Ash Wednesday. And we have four scriptures that we will be focusing on in scripture where that mention sackcloth and ashes. And if you'd like to follow along, those scriptures are printed for you in your bulletin. I will be reading from the NIV translation. And I'm going to read from the book of Esther first. And this is Mordecai. And this is what it says in Esther chapter 4, verses 1 through 3. When Mordecai learned all that had been done, he tore his clothes and put on sackcloth and ashes and went out into the city wailing loudly and bitterly. But he went only as far as the king's gate, because no one clothed in sackcloth was allowed to enter it. In every province to which the edict and the order of the king came, there was great mourning among the Jews, with fasting, weeping, wailing, and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. And then in the book of Job, we read in Job, the second chapter, verse 8, this is what it says about Job. And then Job took a piece of broken pottery, and he scraped himself with it as he sat among the ashes. And then in the book of Daniel we read, in Daniel the ninth chapter, verse 3, as he prepares to offer a prayer, it is recorded. So I turned to the Lord God and pleaded with him in prayer and petition, in fasting, in sackcloth, and ashes. And then in Matthew's gospel in the 11th chapter in the 21st verse, this is Jesus speaking to the unrepentant cities. And he says, Woe to Chorazan, woe to you, Bethsaida. If the miracles that were performed in you had been performed in Tyre and Sedan, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Today is Ash Wednesday. And I don't know about you, but in my life, we didn't always, um, in the church I was in, gather on Ash Wednesday and for the imposition of ashes on our forehead. That was something that came about when I was in college where, where we did that. I worked in the kitchen on Wednesday nights. I was a church cook, so I never got to go and have my head messed up and then come out and look funny. And... It would be interesting that as I would be leaving the kitchen on Wednesday nights and, and taking my apron off and the cooks, we were leaving, there would all these people come and they had the dirtiest foreheads. And you, you wanted to say, you got something on your head. And then if you left there and you went to the grocery store somewhere, it was always interesting to run into a church member and there they would. There they would be with those ashes on their forehead. What is Ash Wednesday? What is the importance of the sackcloth and ashes? And what does all that mean for us? You know, today is a day in which we remember our mortality. Today is a day that we, we confess our need of repentance, that we need to repent of our sins. And we need to turn away, and we need God's help to help us to achieve that. It's a... It's a time for us to offer our sacrifice to God, remembering His sacrifice for us, the sacrifice of His Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And on Ash Wednesday, we begin a 40-day journey. Now, that's not including Sundays, because we, as believers, consider Sunday resurrection days. Those are victory days. All, every Sunday of the year is. But during this 40-day season in which we journey... We encounter Christ's redemption, what he's done for us in personal and, and unique ways as we open ourselves up to experiencing the resurrection and experiencing encountering the redemption. And in this time, we spend time in reflection, we spend, spend time in prayer, and we spend time doing something oftentimes we really don't always like, but it's an amazing spiritual discipline. And that is fasting. 
And we do all of this knowing it, that it's because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ that we will never be the same again. History won't. Humanity won't. And when we get very personally, we will never be the same again. You know, there once was a man who was in a terrible accident. It was a horrific car accident, but he walked away from it. And he was bloody and he was bruised and, and people tried to help him and he'd chew him away and he'd say, there's nothing wrong with me. And they, they told him, they, but sir, you're bleeding. It's obvious you're hurt. He said, leave me alone. There's nothing wrong with me. But sir, you need to see a doctor. In fact, the ambulance is on the way and it won't take long. No, I don't need an ambulance and I don't need a physician. He said, there's nothing wrong with me. He would not let anybody help him. He ended up walking away from the accident after he dealt with the authorities. And his wife came and she picked him up and she took him home and all the way home. And at home, all she continued to do was say, honey, we need to have you checked out. I think things are pretty serious. And she wiped the blood from his body and she helped him in the soreness of his feelings. Continue, all he ever said to her still was, there's nothing wrong with me. Becoming very belligerent about it. Well, over time, it was revealed that there really was something wrong with this man. And because he wouldn't do anything about his injuries, the injuries led to his death. And there really was something wrong with him. You know, saying that there's nothing wrong with me, if I say that, that can really be pretty dangerous for me to say that. Because, you know what, I have to be honest. There is something wrong with me. Spiritually, I need a Savior. Spiritually, I know, and I have to be honest and say, I am a sinner. And we... As men and women and boys and girls, we need a Savior. We need God to help us. We need God to forgive us of our sins. We need God to, to give us that second chance. To provide us a, the right way when we've chosen the wrong way. And what we as Christians think and believe is that because of Jesus Christ, we will never be the same again because of the resurrection. Because of salvation, because of redemption, we will never be the same. You know, in Scripture, we're told that people, when they repented, we've read in Esther and Job and Daniel and Matthew, that when people repented, a sign of repentance, a symbol of repentance, was sackcloth, similar to what covers the altar here, and ashes. And they wore those things as a symbol of as a sign of their repentance, knowing that they had to make something right. That something had been wrong. They, they, they admitted and they said, hey, there is something wrong with me. And I want to make it right. And so they wore that as a symbol of repentance. You know, God forgives us. And he gives, forgives us purely out of his own mercy for us. He doesn't have to. But God does it. And he does it as a result of his, his amazing love for us. Of the gift of his grace for us, he forgives us. And because of the sacrifice that Jesus Christ has made for you, and because of the sacrifice that he's made for me, you and I, we fully know that we are forgiven of our sins and that we'll never be the same again. And we know we can't earn forgiveness from God. We can't buy forgiveness from God. That it's a free gift of His grace. That He loves us enough that He provides for us forgiveness. We read in the book of Romans in chapter 5 and verse 8 that God shows His love for us that while we were yet sinners, He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins. And so, what can you say about your life? Are you a person who can say, there's nothing wrong with me, I'm fine. 
Or are you a person who says, I'll never be the same again because of Jesus Christ? Lent is a time of self-denial. Lent is a time of, of to give up something. It's a time to, to be self-focused on what Jesus Christ has given up for us. And it's more than a time to simply think about, oh, you know what, I'm giving up chocolate for 40 days. <laughs> or ice cream, or soft drinks, or not playing golf on Wednesdays, or, or whatever. It's more than that. It's a time to think about repentance. It's a time to think about giving up the sins of our lives so that you and I begin to develop the heart and the mind of Christ. And we know that we cannot fully do it on our own, but we're really dependent on God's help in order to achieve that. And in that way, season is also more than, Lent is more than just a season. It becomes an attitude. It becomes an attitude of honesty. It becomes an attitude of humility. It becomes an attitude of relief. And it becomes an attitude of, of knowing that our, our sins can be forgiven through Jesus Christ. And in that way, it becomes a season of joy. Because we know we will never be the same again because of Easter. Lord, I'm always amazed, and we are always amazed that you love us too much to leave us the way we are, but that you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the Lord and Savior of our life. Thank you for loving us enough to provide for us through your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, forgiveness. Redemption, salvation, and a life that is abundant in your grace. And help us in this season and on this journey that we're in. To become honest with ourselves and say, you know what? There is something wrong with me. But I will never be the same again. Because of God's love for me. Through the gift of His Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Almighty God, You have created out of the dust of this earth life for us. And so as we prepare to come before You, we ask You to help us to receive these ashes as a, as a sign of our mortality and a sign of our repentance. As we remember what all you have provided for us through the gift of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And it's in his holy name we pray. And together we say, Amen. We are going to invite you in a moment to come forward. And Pastor Lee and I will be here and we consider it a privilege to have opportunity to to make the mark of the cross on your head. And we will ask you, as you do that, to repent and to believe in the gospel. You're invited then to come and, and to be at the altar if you would like and are able. Just be in, be in a time of, of personal prayer with the Lord and share with the Lord what Lent means to you. Share with the Lord your form and your need of repentance. To share with the Lord your sacrifice that you are, you are giving up or you're adding to your life during the season of Lent that will help you to remember what he has done for us. The early Christians observed with great devotion the day of, of our Lord's passion and resurrection. And it really became a custom of the church that before Easter celebration... That believers should experience a 40-day spiritual preparation. That during this season, converts to the faith would prepare for holy baptism. The, the early believers, they took this serious. 
And it was during this time that persons that had committed sins, serious sins, and had separated themselves from other people were reconciled through penitence and forgiveness. And that collectively, together, and individually, people offered their their need of repentance, and they were restored into full participation in the life of the church. And so it's in this way that the whole congregation then and, and, and now is reminded of the mercy and the forgiveness that's proclaimed through the gospel of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ, and that we all need to have our faith renewed and to ignite it. And so, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I invite you to observe a holy Lent by self-examination, by repentance, by prayer, by fasting, by self-denial, by reading and meditating on God's word, and to make a right beginning of repentance in this season as you receive the mark of our mortal nature upon your forehead, you will be invited to come and to encounter the powerful presence of the Lord. As we're invited to repent and offer our sacrifices to God this evening, let us pray together as found in your bulletin. Merciful God, you called us forth from the dust of the earth. You claimed us for Christ in the waters of baptism. Look upon us as we enter these 40 days, bearing the mark of ashes, and bless our journey through the desert of Lent to the font of rebirth. May our fasting be a hunger for justice, our alms a making of peace, our prayer the chant of humble and grateful hearts. All that we do and pray is in the name of Jesus, for in his cross you proclaim your love forever and ever. Amen. We'll invite the choir to come first, if you would like. You're invited to come. You just stay there. I'll come to you.
If you're able and willing, I ask, invite you to take the hand of the person that's sitting beside you. Let's pray. Lord, as we gather here in this beginning of a journey and of a season, it's a spiritual journey and it's a it's an amazing season. We thank you for the persons whose hands we hold or, or that are close by to us. We ask you, Lord, that in those persons' lives to give them a fresh glimpse of your love in this season. Help them to know that they will never be the same again because of your faithfulness and of your love and the investment of your son in their lives. And for ourselves, Lord, we pray that same thing. May we walk in true repentance. May we be open to you in fresh ways. And Father, as we journey together, may we find ourselves truly realizing that we are never the same again because of a a cross, because of empty tomb and because of the truth of the resurrection of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. So Father, we need your help. We need your presence. We need the power of your Holy Spirit to enable us to make this journey because we do not make it on our own. We make it with you. And it's in the holy name of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that we pray. And together we pray the prayer that you've taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation. Deliver us from evil, for thine is kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God is good in all the time. He is. I invite you to take your hymnals, and we're going to sing a song we really only sing once a year, if even at that. And so it may be a new song for you, but it's a song that will, will ignite us as we prepare for this journey we, we're in. Um, Lord, who throughout these 40 days, I invite you to stand if you're able as we sing together.
and that is our prayer and that is our hope that through this journey we will attain an Easter like we've never obtained before or encountered. Go in the knowledge that our God is a God who's faithful. And he's faithful in your past, faithful in your present. And we're so amazingly grateful that he's faithful our future. And his son has gone to prepare all eternity to be mine and to be yours. He's coming back to take us to be with him. Don't just come to church, but go out and be the church. God bless you. And we look forward to seeing you Sunday.